the day seven prompt was print so i've done this kind of screen print animation came out pretty cool so starting off here got a sphere and just must have the bottom section there and i made this group here with like an absolute and then map range and then multiplying by a sign so i can pull things in various directions flatten things off so that allows me to make a flat square at the bottom and then i've used an absolute subtract maximum length um, just like how i did with the windows and that's giving me this rounded rectangle which i can then use to extrude upwards um, and also expand that top section to straighten up the sides try doing some things with a an rgb curve there just to have a little bit more manual control over the profile and coming in now just trying to mask out how i wanted to do the legs i thought i was going to kind of fold them around inside a little bit more but in the end i went with this kind of masking technique um, it just gave me something relatively quickly and moving on up now i've taken the front section i don't have a very sort of mesh efficient way of working here i just kind of take slices off the sphere um, so I've taken the front and just flattened it down, just like how I did with the table. This time I've also got a gradient running bottom to top, and I'm using that to mix between two combine X, Y, Z, so I can position top and bottom manually. Much the same process, round rectangle extruding upwards. But uh, this time I've got a little bit of a profile on the edge, which I'm controlling the X and the Y and the Z, just so I've got that... Uh, that manual control over that profile. Similarly, doing the back here, the uh, taking the back of the sphere to be the screen. So shrinking it down using alpha to cut it out and then basically trying to work out a way that I can get the frame section. So I need a gradient running around the outside here. So you can see that I'm just using um, maximums and map ranges to get that worked out. And then using RGB curves to give myself that profile and controlling the, the sort of the Z displacement separately to the X and Y displacement so I can get my straight edges. And it's important that this frame can rotate. So I found that if I got the object coordinates into a vector rotate and then subtract the object coordinates from the rotated object coordinates, that allows me to rotate the object, but then I also need to rotate my displacement. So I'm also doing a vector rotate on the displacement sort of in parallel. Now each one of these is masked to its specific region. So I have like a displacement mask similar to the alpha mask. Um, there's just a little bit of threshold between. So I'm not, my alpha mask is very slightly smaller than my displacement mask. And that basically means I'm not getting any artifacts on the edge of my objects. Um, and then I'm just using a vector math scale at the end of each section so that I'm just multiplying all of my displacement by zero except from all the section that I want to work on. And then that gets added to the main line. You see now I'm working on the paper. Same thing again, take a section of the sphere, cut it out, make it flat. And now I'm just doing a, this sort of rotation. So it rotates 90 degrees, drops down and then rotates 90 degrees back. Um, and I wanted to have this all controlled on sliders. So I just have like one input and it controls the whole, the whole motion here. Um, it's fairly simple-ish to do. It's just the timing between things triggering. Um, so obviously I want the thing to rotate up to the side and then I want it to drop down. Um, I might do a tutorial on how to actually get things to animate in order like this. I think it's... Uh, I think it's quite interesting, not perhaps very useful, but interesting. Um, making the bottle now, the bottle of die. So I've just taken the right hand side of my sphere, flattened it again, and we make spheres, oh, we make circles, sorry, with uh, cosine and sine together. So I can take my y axis of my generated, which is the front to back, and then I can remap that range that we see on this section to be minus pi to pi and then put that through cosine 
So that's going to give me the wiggle that I need in the X axis. So that's my X displacement. And then I also need to have a Y displacement, which I'm using as sine. So my sine allows me to get that full circle then. I'm using Z gradient to control the radius, and that allows me to get the tapered tip. Again, we're just doing stuff with rotation here. So rotation for the displacement in parallel to the object is object rotation and then they add together and obviously I want to have stuff um, moving kind of naturally but I don't want to get all the kind of the wobbly behavior in the bottle I don't want that to be ani animated manually so I've just mixed over to a, a one-dimensional noise and I'm using the color output because that's got RGB so we can use that as an XYZ displacement um, and this is all being driven by the frame number so it moves just with the timeline we mix over to that um, so you get that nice blend to the natural movement and um, I've just duplicated all those nodes down and used the left hand side of the sphere now um, but tweaking some things so changing the axis that we're working on here is allowing me to get that horizontal roll and then I need to take an output from the sine and cosine and that's going to give me um, a white to black, one to zero, on the vertical and horizontal. And then I can use these with RGB curves like I am here to control the uh, the profile. So I get really fine control to give this squeegee like a really natural look. Just trying to taper off the ends here. Spent probably a little bit too long tapering the ends. Longer than I should have done considering that in the actual animation the hole takes up like 10 pixels or something so you don't really see it in, in motion and there's a lot of other things to look at so it was kind of unnecessary that I spent maybe 10 minutes or so trying to work out how to close it up so getting the actual motion for this to work was quite challenging because I have rotation in Z, rotation in Y, and that's giving me the uh, the ability to light on its side and then rock it up to operate, but also have it laid down next to the screen and then picked up and put on top of the screen. And then next to that we've also got um, X translation and Z translation as well as Y translation. So got five things happening all at the same time all of these i've just put through like a start and final position using the mixes and that way i can just use the factor on the mixes to interpolate linearly between uh, like start position final position and kind of stack these things together so it's going to let me um, pick it up and rotate so i'm putting my z through an RGB curve because this is going to give me the free control to do multiple motions on that Z which allows me to basically pick up, rotate through 90 degrees, rotate into upright, put down on the top of the screen and then drag down in the Y direction while also becoming more upright. And all of this just needs to coincide with the moving of the bottle, the moving of the page down to the screen and the screen closing onto it. So everything happens in a, in a sequence, page move, screen close, bottle comes, squeegee wipes, screen opens. Um, and all of these things need to happen with specific timings. Um, I'm using smoother step on a lot of these map ranges because that's giving me the easing interpolation. So that's extremely useful. and just driving it off the frame. When I have multiple motions stacked one in front of the other, I also use a, a math node set to greater than on the frame. So I can say at frame 120 or whatever, switch from this map range to this map range. And that lets me have the reverse motion as well. Um, you just saw me put on the fade to sphere and what I'm doing now is the the clay wipe so we've got that like the kind of the proof that it's an actual sphere 
in the animation. At this point I realised I hadn't actually done anything with the materials, so I'm just going through the whole thing now, putting on colours, just using the, um, the, trans the alpha masks as mix factors. So I went through and made all of the colours and then I duplicated that mix array. Uh, one for the roughness and one for bump, just so I can make all of the wood textured. Um, I'm going to calculate some additional masks on here as well because we need, um, I need a band around the bottle so it's got a label and I also need the screen to have a, a different material on the screen section to the, on the rest of the frame so I can put wood which has got like these dabs of paint on. Just calculating these additional masks that I need. These range mask nodes come in so handy. I use them all the time. So uh, I covered making those as a screenshot in a previous video. Definitely worth just checking, just because that's a, a very useful utility to have. Trying to work out how I'm going to put the paint um, to wipe down the screen. I almost gave up on doing it actually, but I ended up going with a method of creating a rounded rectangle, um, just as like a, a mask for the final wipe size, and then passing a gradient running down in the y direction. So you can see I've got that rounded rectangle now, and I'm just calculating this gradient. So that when I translate it along, it's going to wipe. And I'm just calibrating that so it moves at the same time, at the same speed, and with a relatively natural looking fall off that it could potentially be pulled along by our squeegee. I needed to make a blender logo. Obviously, not using image textures here, just wanting to make it with nodes entirely. So I've used rotate and then uh, multiplying to get rid of one of the axes so I can just uh, have it project completely and then using an absolute subtract maximum length. That's allowing me to get this sort of round tipped line using the length um, and the rotation is allowing me to rotate minus 40 degrees, zero and positive 40. There's three separate lines which I then put all of this into one group just to keep the blender logo together. This whole job was just a whole lot of masking. A lot of work to get it all masked out. And then I also needed a way to dab on the paint to begin with. So I used a uh, distance to get my position. And then I essentially burnt it on with, uh, with noise. So you get that, that kind of variation in the paint splatter to begin with. And that's it.